Hey guys, in this next video we're going to look at an alternative to long division and that is what's known as synthetic division. Uh, synthetic division is, in my opinion, just a simpler way for dividing by a linear expression. Notice I say linear expression, so this only works uh, when what you're dividing by is degree one. Uh, if what you're dividing by is degree two or higher, then you have to resort to long division. So we're going to divide x cubed minus 14x squared plus 51x minus 54 by the binomial x plus 2 using synthetic division. And so I'm going to show you how this is set up here uh, in uh, this diagram. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of practice. It's going to look a little bit weird, but I think you'll get the hang of it um, after just a couple of examples. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to identify my dividend, and I'm going to write that here below uh, in standard form. Uh, including all of the exponents. And so my dividend is x cubed minus 14x squared plus 51x minus 54. Okay, so uh, that is my dividend. There's four terms there. Then I'm going to look at my divisor, which is x plus 2. Okay, and I'm going to think if x plus 2 is a factor of this polynomial, what would one of the zeros be? Well, you know that you take factors and you set them equal to zero. So if we were factoring this polynomial and x plus 2 was one of our factors, if we set x plus 2 equal to zero, we get negative 2 as one of the x-intercepts or one of the zeros. So we're going to put a negative 2 here. Okay, what we're basically doing is we're reversing the sign of x plus 2, but it's because if you set x plus 2 equal to 0 and solve, you get negative 2. So that's what goes here. Then I'm going to take all of the coefficients of the dividend, and I'm going to place them along this top row inside this sort of inverted division house. Okay, so my coefficients are 1 on the x cubed, that goes here, then negative 14, on the x squared, then positive 51, and then finally negative 54. Notice I'm not putting the variables or the exponents, just the coefficients. Okay, so those go there. And now that I have this set up, I'm going to bring down my first coefficient 1, and I'm going to multiply 1 times this negative 2. 1 times negative 2 is negative 2. That's going to go here and then I'm going to combine these next two in this column, negative 14 minus 2, which is negative 16. And now I'm just going to continue this process. So I'm going to take negative 16 times the negative 2, and that's going to give me a positive 32. That's going to go here, below my 51. And now I'll add 51 plus 32, which is 83. I'll multiply again, 83 times negative 2, uh, that's going to give me negative 166. Combine negative 54 and negative 166, and that's going to give me negative 220. Okay, so you might be asking yourself, well, what was the point of doing that? Well, this gives us uh, our answer if we look at the numbers and treat them as coefficients in this bottom row. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at these first two numbers, or these first three numbers, excuse me, that are in front of this uh, sort of bar that I've um, drawn here. So the fact that there's three numbers here represents that there are three terms in our answer. Uh, the first term is going to be an x squared, or a 1x squared. The next term would be minus 16x, and then the last term is the constant plus 83. So the number of terms, if you take that down by one, that gives you your degree, degree two. Okay, and these are just each of the coefficients on uh, those terms in descending order. This last number that's on the other side of the bar, the negative 220, well, that's the remainder. And so you know from long division that we write the remainder over the dividend. So this is minus 220 over x plus 2. So my final answer is x squared minus 16x plus 83 minus 220 over the quantity x plus 2. This is the exact same answer that you would have arrived at 
doing long division. But uh, as you learn to get more comfortable with this process, uh, I think you'll find it's a lot quicker than long division. Okay, let's look at another example and try this process again. So we've got x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6x minus 9 divided by the quantity x plus 3. So I'm going to set this up uh, by drawing my inverted long division house like this. And again, you start with your uh, divisor, x plus 3, and you think if x plus 3 is equal to 0, what is x equal to? Well, that would be negative 3, so that's going to go here. And then your, in your top row, we're going to do the coefficients of your dividend. It's a 1x cubed plus 2x squared minus 6x minus 9. And then uh, this last number, minus 9, uh, down below in the bottom row, I've got this little bar here. That's going to represent my remainder. Okay, so let's go through this process again. We bring down the first coefficient, 1. 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1. Then we repeat. Negative 1 times negative 3 is 3. Negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. And then negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 9 plus 9 is 0. Okay, so what are we left with? We're left with three terms again before the bar. Okay, and so those three terms mean we have a degree 2 uh, polynomial. Uh, it's a 1x squared as our first term, minus 1x, minus 3. And then because there's a 0 here, that means we have no remainder. So this is our answer, x squared minus x minus 3. Okay, let's try number 3. x cubed minus 57x plus 56 divided by the quantity x minus 7. So I'll draw my inverted division house here. Uh, if I set x minus 7 equal to 0, I get x equals 7. So that goes here. And before I put my coefficients up in the top, I want you to notice something. Okay, if I write out uh, my dividend again uh, in standard form, I have x cubed and then my next term is a minus 57x. Well, normally between a cubed term and a x to the first term, there would be an x squared term. There is not in this one, but I need to include that coefficient in my top row. So I'm going to write out for myself a plus 0x squared. And this is my placeholder, just like we do in long division, okay, to represent that I don't have an x squared term, but I'm still going to think about it being there. And then after that is a minus 57x and then a plus 56. So now that I have this in here and I fill out my top row, my first coefficient is again 1. And then my next number is going to be a 0 to represent that placeholder, that missing x squared term. You have to have placeholders when you do synthetic division, so make sure that's there. Then it's the minus 57 and then finally it's the 56. Okay, so now we'll bring down the 1 here. 1 times 7 is 7. That goes below the 0. 0 plus 7 is 7. 7 times 7 is 49. Negative 57 plus 49 is negative 8. And then 7 times negative 8 is negative 56. 56 minus 56 is 0. So you get, again, three terms in your final answer. There's no remainder for this one. Uh, so your first term will be an x squared, then a plus 7x, and then a minus 8. Okay, number 4, x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus 6. We're dividing that by the quantity x minus 4. So look at your divisor. If I set x minus 4 equal to 0, uh, 4 would be what x is equal to, so that goes here. Your dividend, uh, there are no uh, placeholders needed in the dividend, so I'll just fill this out uh, like it's written already. 1x cubed minus 3x squared minus 7x plus 6, so that's going to be my top row. Bring down my 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 3 plus 4 is 1. 1 times 4 is 4. Negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3. 
negative 3 times 4 is negative 12, and 6 minus 12 is negative 6. So again, three terms here in your answer. Uh, this would be x squared plus x minus 3, and then there is a remainder for this one. Uh, the minus 6 means that you're going to have a minus 6 over your original divisor, which was x minus 4. Okay, last example number five, uh, we're going to use synthetic division uh, and the given factor to completely factor this polynomial function. Okay, so what this means is I'm giving you the following polynomial function, y equals x cubed plus 7x squared minus 38x minus 240. This is a four-term polynomial right here, and you know that in order to factor four-term polynomials, we have a method called the box method. But that only works if the product of your outer terms is equal to the product of your inner terms. And if you check that now, you'll see that that's not the case here. Uh, x cubed times negative 240 is negative 240 x cubed. And if you multiply your middle two terms, you actually get negative 266 x cubed. So the box method won't work here. But I am telling you that one of the factors of this polynomial is x plus 5. So what does it mean for something to be a factor of something else? Well, it means it goes in evenly. So what I can do here with this information is I can use my synthetic division and I can divide this polynomial here by x plus 5 and that will allow me to get the other factors of uh, the polynomial. Okay, so knowing one factor will help me get the other ones uh, for this particular problem. So I'm going to set up um, my long division house like this. Again, I'm dividing by the binomial x plus 5, and so that means I'm going to put a negative 5 out here. On the top row, my coefficients are going to be 1, 7, negative 38, and negative 240. And now I'm going to uh, do this synthetic division one more time. So 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, 7 minus 5 is 2, 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Combine these to get a negative 48. Negative 48 times negative 5 is positive 240. And so we get a remainder of 0. If I'm telling you something is a factor um, of another polynomial, then you should get a remainder of 0. Okay, if you don't, something's wrong. But the fact that this is a factor uh, means that the remainder should be equal to 0. So that's good that that happened. So let's think now uh, what that means. So I just divided uh, this polynomial by the quantity x plus 5, and I got uh, this as my answer. I got x squared plus 2x minus 48. So what that means is that this original polynomial factors into x squared plus 2x minus 48 times the quantity x plus 5, that original factor there, Okay, if I multiplied these together, I would get this as my answer again. But how that helps me is I know how to factor this, x squared plus 2x minus 48. This factors into x plus 8 times the quantity x minus 6. So knowing that factor of x plus 5 has allowed me to factor the rest of the polynomial, and it factors into x plus 8 times the quantity x minus 6 times the quantity x plus 5. Okay, if you had any questions over this video, make sure those are written down for the next time. We'll practice this in class then, so until then, have a nice day. You're all wonderful people. Take care.